folks, Ariel over here at Finest. Today I wanted to do a video answering a bunch of the questions that I've got most frequently over the last few videos. So I am parked in the new spot. It's alternately stunning and raining out there, so you probably can't see the mountains behind me, but I made myself a list of the things that people ask me most often about the new place. Am I bringing the soil from the old garden along to the new garden? No, I am not. Um, a couple reasons. I have done a lot of work with composting and such over the years to improve the soil in the old location and that's one of the gifts I just want to leave to that piece of land that you know let me live on it for quite a few years uh, to make it a little richer and healthier than it was when I moved in otherwise you're not going to be able to see any objects left no fencing no you know blocks no house no nothing else but the whole area should be a little bit softer and richer and then the gophers can just go to town because there's no soil they can actually dig through. That's why they weren't there when I first moved in because the ground was so rocky they couldn't tunnel. Now there's a little bit of topsoil so they can, but they'll have to find wild things to eat like they were before I was there. Um, and I have, at the new place here, we have really nice topsoil and I will continue to do what I've done before and continue adding compost and so on, but uh, a lot of people are concerned about, you know, am I bringing that? I should. It would be a sad to see all that go to waste. It's not going to waste. It's going to be there making that little clearing in the woods lovelier and healthier and, um, and there was a bunch of comments about how expensive buying soil is. That's true. Fortunately, I do not need to buy any because we do have good topsoil on this place. So that's soil. Firewood. That was the next thing I got tons of questions about. Am I bringing all my firewood? What am I going to do? How am I going to heat the house? There's no trees on the property now. Um, yes, I am moving the firewood that I currently have split. It's not all done yet, but it, it will be in the next little bit. I'm going to be making, you know, trips back and forth as will Clay when he has time. And so that will eventually all get moved here as well. But when that is used up, yes, there are not dead standing trees to cut on this property. But just like in the last location, to before I was living on a, a kind of a ranch that was hundreds of acres, and part of it was open and part of it was wooded, so we could cut trees just right on that property. But it backed up to National Forest. I am still very close to National Forest, and in this area, and I realize this is different in different parts of the country, um, you can get firewood permits to go cut wood in the National Forest. You do the exact same kind of thing that I've been doing, um, cutting, you know, the standing dead trees around here that's mostly beetle-killed pine. There's millions of acres of beetle-killed pine that are standing dead, dried out, have been there, you know, dead for years, and eventually if nobody burns them in a fireplace, they burn up in a giant forest fire like... One a couple years ago that was one of the closest ones to my house that burned 60,000 acres, I think. Some of it's so hot that it will probably regenerate, but it's going to be decades before anything is growing there because it, it scorched the ground so hot it completely sterilized it. So that will be, we will still do the exact same thing for firewood and we still plan on wood being the primary heat, but we'll just have to drive a little further off the property and into the woods to get it. We already had to drive around a bigger property to get it. So anyway, that's not really going to be a whole lot different, even though there's not lots of dead trees here. Um, a bunch of people ask how Burley's handling the move. You can't see him. He's laying right at my feet right now. Um, he seems fine. He's... English Shepherds in general, and definitely him in particular, tend to be very people-oriented dogs. They like their people, and he has always been his whole life fine wherever I was. And we spent a lot of time in the tiny house. Sometimes we visited friends and stayed at their place. Sometimes we car camped and stayed there. Sometimes we went backpacking and he slept in a tent. He's always seemed to think his home is just wherever I am at the moment. Even like when we're backpacking, if I set my pack down or set up the tent, he's like, okay, this is my home space uh, for, you know, right now. So he hasn't seemed one bit phased. And of course, he's been on this property as we were doing projects here um, last, you know, fall and uh, late summer. Uh, he and I did a bunch of camping down here when I'd have a little free time. We'd sleep in the tent down here. So he's, you know, this property is familiar to him as well. He's been back and forth quite a bit. So he seems completely unfazed and happy as long as he's with his person or people wherever they are. Um, water. That was a big one I forgot to mention when I first did a video about some of the features of this property, and I don't know how I forgot that because it was one of the biggest things. Of course, everyone needs water to live. Um, no, we have no current plans to drill well. There is the, the creek water um, that flows through here. You probably saw that in several of the videos. 
and so and we do have irrigation rights for that so we can use that for watering garden watering trees you know that kind of thing but one of the very cool features that made me really like this property which is why I don't know how I forgot to mention that is there is gravity fed spring water here um, from a spring that is up on the mountainside and it is you know no pumping involved gravity feeds it comes out the hydrant in the middle of the property at something like 80 psi I mean it is it's coming down that mountain with some pressure. It's awesome water. It's what we're drinking, um, you know, and, and that's a spectacular water source. Um, power, yes, as I mentioned, there is power right now on a pole out by the road. Fineth is still in exactly the same situation she's always been in. I'm using that spring water to fill my water tank. Um, I'm still using a composting toilet plant to do that the rest of my life. Um, she's still using her limited amount of power from her little solar panels, which are moved beside her. I actually get more sun now that we're not tucked in the trees. Um, so that's all the same. Will we use that grid power eventually for something? Probably. I never ever want to be in the position where I am reliant on that working for basic things like being able to heat, pump water, cook, that kind of thing. And I'm fairly confident I'm good on that since I've been living with this setup for many years. Um, but will we probably put some wiring into, we want to build a, a shop for clay, you know, will there be wiring in there so power tools can be used and charged? Yeah, we probably will. Um, so right now, Fineth is still off grid. There's power on the corner of the property. It will probably go to a building, you know, something like a shop and uh, be used for things there as long as the grid's working. But it won't be the end of the world. Nothing will be a big disaster if it's not. Um, septic. A bunch of people ask, am I putting in a septic system? No. As I just said, I love composting toilets. I really enjoy mine. I hope at some point the whole world switches to that, even though I realize that's not likely to happen in my lifetime. Uh, but that is what we intend to use forever. We've got the one in the house. Uh, Clay already had set up a little one off in the trees that we used all last summer. So we've currently got two toilets on the place and have no plans to install a septic. Um, elevation. A bunch of people ask my way lower or higher, you know, how does this relate to the other property? And, and climate. These two kind of go together. So this spot is a little bit warmer than the last place. A lot of that is largely due to it's more sunny. Some people seem to think, and I can see why, that I went from, you know, a very treed area to a very open area that's miles and miles away. It is true, it's miles and miles between the two. They are almost the same elevation, actually. I'm still a little over 6,000 feet above sea level. And they are um, actually fairly similar climates. This one is a little bit warmer, uh, like a growing zone warmer, um, and primarily because it's more open. But the thing that you could never see because of the trees is, so I was on you know a few hundred acre ranch, and where I was tucked in a corner in the trees, there, you know, right beside me, if you went through just a few of those trees, there was an open hay field and then more open fields and so on. So I could have literally gone a few hundred feet from where I've been living and been out in the open and had, you know, mountain views and all that. But of course, you know, hay fields were being used. That's part of why it worked to make hay. Um, that's part of why it worked for the owners to let me park there, that little clearing in the woods. Nobody was doing anything else with, so I wasn't in anybody's way. So... I, I could have gone, now we went more than just a few feet, but we could have gone just a few feet and been in a very similar climate and, or very similar looking situation. And from here, if I went just a few hundred yards off of this property, I would be back up on a hillside that's a foothill of a mountain as well in dense trees. So it's not that different. Um, as far as that, like I could have had, I could have had more trees if we'd bought a, a property over up on a hillside here, or if I'd been parked out in the middle of a hayfield there, I would have had more open sunshine and such. But, um, so hopefully that makes sense that both areas have similar things going on. I'm just in a little more open spot now than I was. A lot of people ask about wind. There is a little more of a breeze here than there was in my clearing. It's not really different than it was when I walked away from that clearing, like out into that open hayfield, there always was wind. I was just very protected by the trees, part of why I'm doing lots of tree planting. And I'll have more videos on that. I think I'm up to 157 trees and bushes as of right now, and I'll be going to plant some more as soon as I'm done filming this. Um, so a slightly warmer climate, slightly longer growing season, still a colder than most places in the country spot. And as you probably know, I really enjoy the cold weather. Um, wildlife. Will there be more wildlife, less wildlife? I put bird feeders up here and I already, amazingly, because I actually thought there would be less for at least for a while, have even more birds here than I did before in the woods. And 
all of, I, I see elk, I see moose, uh, I haven't seen one, but I've seen scat from a bear. Those are all here, but they are probably considerably less likely to come out here in the wide open, just because that's what wild animals generally do. They like to stay in the cover. So it was partly why they came, you know, right by my house all the time before, because I was in the tree cover and they could skirt around things like those open hay fields. Now I'm out in the open right now, so they will, I expect, mostly be skirting around me and going through neighboring properties. So there should be a whole lot, even though it's, it's only like a few hundred yards difference as far as the kind of terrain and openness, there will probably be a lot less wildlife like right at the door, but it's not very far away. And there is still possibilities of having all those things around, but significantly less of the big carnivores are willing to be out in the wide open. And so I'd be much more startled now to see a grizzly bear or a mountain lion directly outside the door, though they're not very far. Um, neighbors, that was another thing. Oh my goodness, some people are so excited I have neighbors and have rejoined civilization. Some people are so sad that there's neighbors here. The neighbors, again, are not much different than in the old place. I had neighbors there too, but again, you could not see any of them because the trees were so dense. Um, that, that was a ranch. This is still a ranching community. There are little farmhouses dotted out around. The closest place is probably like a tenth a mile away from where Fineth is actually sitting. Yes, because I have more of a view, I can see some of them right now. Uh, we have awesome neighbors. Actually, we have some really spectacular neighbors. Um, one was very helpful just the other night. Um, so I have no problem with that. I had some awesome neighbors before, and we do like privacy and the shelter, you know, so back to where planting trees. Eventually you won't be able to see those neighbors again. But the amount of neighbors, actually the area I'm in now is a little less populated overall as the general area than where I was before. So now you can see some houses in the background because they're not all behind trees, but that's not substantially different. If anything, there's a few less people in this kind of community. Um, Oh, and then a few people said, I guess some people missed the video, but why are you moving? Why did you leave that beautiful place? Why didn't you just buy that place from the kids? Different questions like that. Um, for one, I don't know if the children of my landlords who passed away last winter are going to sell it or what they're going to do. And two, if they did sell it, there's no way I could possibly afford the property I was living on. It's in the neighborhood of many tens of millions of dollars worth of property. I couldn't, if somebody gave it to me, the property taxes alone on it are more than I've ever earned in a year. So that was just a non-option. I, I knew I was not looking at staying there long term or buying that property or anything like that. So that, I think, was all the most frequent questions I got on the last videos. Uh, hopefully that answers them. I have got a bunch of work to do. I've got a bunch more exciting videos coming up with new stuff in the next few days whenever I have time. I'm kind of working outside. It's been really rainy and snowy. Um, and I'm trying to do things like plant trees and get the garden, you know, planted. So I run outside and work when, when the sun comes out for a second and then it starts pouring and I come inside and work on a video and then the sun comes out and I go back out. So anyway, that's kind of what I'm doing right now. I'll continue to get videos about what all is going on here out as fast as I can. Hopefully that answers some of the most frequently asked questions in the last few videos. And I hope you all have a lovely day. Hi folks, Ariel over here. Thanks for spending some of your valuable time watching these videos. Hopefully you found something beautiful, educational, interesting, peaceful, relaxing, or useful while you are here. If so, find more videos here, subscribe so you don't miss any updates, and if you like what you found here, feel free to like and share away so that others can benefit as well. You all have a wonderful day.